Hi, this is John Peltonen with 3Sharp. In today's visual how-to, entitled Enabling Users to Act on Line of Business Data with Business Data Catalog Actions, we'll be taking a business data catalog entity, specifically the customer entity uh, that we've defined in a previous how-to that we're just pulling out of the AdventureWorks database, and we'll be associating an email action along with that entity. Um, as you probably learned from studying the business data catalog, these entities that we can expose in SharePoint are read-only. And business data catalog actions are a way that we can link into other third-party pieces of logic, something simple like sending an email, by, and using the business data entity fields as parameters. So it gives us a great way to kind of link into third-party logic without needing to put any business logic in the business data catalog itself. As always with the business data catalog, we're going to start with the metadata file. Now this is the XML file that defines the metadata about the application we're working with. I'm not going to spend a lot of time here as I've already done that in previous how-tos. Specifically though, I am going to go down into the entities element. You'll see we have a single entity called customer with the properties, identifiers, and methods that we've built in our previous how-tos. Now I've also added a new element, and this is new to this particular visual how-to called actions. And this is a container for the various actions that I can define for my entity. Now I have one defined called email customer. I can define the position relative to the other actions uh, defined for this entity. In my case, I'm just saying this should show up first. I've got a default display name. You'll see this is a little prettier with the space in between email and customer. Now here's, here's the crux right here, the URL. And you can see I've just, it's just a mail to URL, but I've got this brace, then the number zero, then, then the end brace here. And this is of course specific to the business data catalog itself. And this is what I'm doing here is saying, okay, this is a parameter. So where you see this zero, put in your parameter. I also have a few other things like an image URL. I can define sort of a little icon that should show up next to my entity and whether or not the URL should open in the new window. If I go down to my action parameters element, um, you can see here this index, this zero corresponds with this zero up here. So what I'm saying is this parameter corresponds to the uh, zero parameter up above what the parameter's name is. And this is the association with, if I, if I scroll up to my properties, oh, sorry, if I scroll up to my methods, and then the properties of the method, this, is a, so this name here has to be associated with the field that I'm getting back in my method definition itself. Email address, so what I'm saying is this field here goes in this parameter here. I can give it a default display name. This is for administration purposes. And that's basically it. That's all I need to do. So I'm just going to go up top, bump up my version number by one, save the file, and then upload it. OK, so I've switched over to Internet Explorer. And I'm in the Business Data Catalog Application section of my Shared Services Administration site for Windows SharePoint Server. Now, as you can see, I've got some applications already defined, including my CRM application that I've been working with. And you can see the version is 0 0.08, and we just bumped ours up to 0 0.09. So I'm simply going to click Import Application Definition, browse to my application definition, and just click Import. Now, SharePoint will parse this XML file, and eventually, if I don't have any errors, just let me know that the application was imported successfully. And here we have our note saying that we were successful. I'll click OK, and I'll go over into the specific application page for my business data catalog applications. I'll scroll down. You can see we have one entity defined called customer. Now I'll click into this customer entity, something I haven't done in the other visual how-tos. And you can see I've got some things I can manage. I can see the fields that are defined for this entity, and I can also see my actions. Now note, I also have this view profile action. This is an action that's created by default by the business data catalog, and it will create a profile page that I could go in and later customize if I wanted to for this particular entity. Now what I'm more interested in is my custom action that I've created called email customer. And you can see everything I defined in that metadata is also defined in here. 
my mail to URL, whether or not it should launch in a new browser window, my parameters that I've defined, and whether or not I have an icon or an image associated with this entity, uh, with this action. I'll cancel out of this. This is good enough for me to know right now. And then I'm going to switch over to my SharePoint site itself. Now I'm going to refresh the page so that I hopefully will have my action show up because I need to re-query my BDC metadata. And let's go to Alexandra. You can see Alexandra's email address, alexandra57 at adventureworks.com. If I click my drop down here, here are my business data catalog actions. I'll click on email customer. And we should have an email page show up with Alexandra's email address. 